Hello everyone, Arash Jafarzadeh here with the next part of our lesson, how to create sound and sound effects for your game. We want to really make it interactive and fun, and adding sound is a really great way to immerse your player into the world you're creating. So, to start out, we're going to need to import in the sounds that we want to use. Now I recommend using MP3 files for sure, helps with the size of the game as well as it avoids some problems with certain file formats. So I'm going to go to File, Import to Library, and I'm going to navigate to my folder. Now I put everything inside a Sounds and Effects folder, but uh, just navigate to wherever you saved your files and make sure that you're keeping everything organized. Now the file I want to import is called overworld.mp3. It's just the uh, background music for the old Zelda game. So I'm going to click open there and we'll find that it's inside my library. It says overworld.mp3. In order for us to use it on the stage, I need to export it within the um, object inside my library. So I'm going to right click it and go to properties. And in here, you may have something that looks similar to this. And we're going to click on the advanced button to show the more advanced features that we're going to be using. One is under linkage. We need to say export for action script. That way I can work with it within my code. Two, I need to make sure that the base class is set to flash.media.sound. That's the class we're going to be using to work with our sound file. Now it should appear automatically, but if it doesn't, you need to type it in. You also want to make sure that export in frame one is checked. It should be checked by default, but just double check that because we are going to be working with it in frame one. So once you've done that, again, we have checked on the export for action script, export in frame one, and that you have the class and the uh, flash media dot sound. We're good to go. We just have to name our class a little bit better. So we're going to essentially create an empty class for our sound file. So I'm just going to call this um, class background music and I capitalize the B because it's a class so background music is the class the base class is flash.media.sound and again those two boxes are checked we're good to go I'm going to click OK it's going to give me a little action script warning it says a definition for this class could not be found blah 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 one's going to be automatically generated for the Swift upon import, um, uh, export, which is good. That's a good thing. Click OK. And head over to your timeline and pull up your actions. So the first thing we need to do is create a new uh, sound that we can play. So here's how that's going to work. I'm going to go ahead and go up to the very top here of my code. And right where we have the variables begin, I'm going to start another variable for the sound. So I'm going to type in var, and I have to give the sound that I want to play a name. So we can just call this, you know, stage one music or something like that. So I'll just say stage one music, colon, sound. So var, stage one music, colon, sound. Now you can name stage one music whatever you want. Equals, and here we're going to say new background music and if you recognize that that was the class we named earlier for our overworld.mp3 from here I'm going to put an open close parentheses and a semicolon the next line I simply have to write down stage one music dot play open close parentheses and semicolon and that's it that's all you need to do as soon as I run it it's going to uh, create a new uh, instance of background music called stage one music and it's going to play stage one music that's pretty much it so let's try it and there it goes it's playing the music Now let's make it so that Link can uh, have sounds appear as he is interacting with his environment. So a really great place to get some sounds is a website. Let's go to www.sound, uh, oh, excuse me, Super Flash Bros. There it is. 
uh, superflashbros.net slash AS3SFXR. And if you go to that site, you'll see this thing. It's pretty awesome. Um, it play, It basically allows you to generate your own 8-bit sound effects. And I have a lot of fun using this thing. So I can change the uh, start frequency. I can uh, have it help me like click on the different generators here. And I can manipulate them. So it's pretty cool stuff. And uh, let's say I want to have it so that when Link slashes his sword, uh, it makes a certain sound. And let's see what we get here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on export. And I'm going to export it to my working folder. And we'll just name this sword. Now I exported it as a wave, and I prefer to work with MP3 files. So I'm going to go ahead and head over to Sound Booth. And you can use any sound editing software, would be fine. So here's my sound, and I'm just going to go to File and Save As, and save it as a .mp3. Alright, looks good to me. I'm going to close that and head over to my Flash document here. Again, go to File, Import to Library, and I'm going to import in sword.mp3. Right click sword.mp3 and go to properties under the advanced area. I'm going to make a few changes. We're going to export it again for action script. We're going to export it in frame one. We have to name the class, so I will just call this um, sword sounds or sword sound. That should be fine. And then we're going to click OK there. And we're going to go ahead and type in var, and this will be, you know, sword hit or something, you know, sword hit, colon sound, equals new, call it sword sound, open close parentheses semicolon. So again, sword sound was that class we created down here. Sword hit is going to be what it's going to be playing. And we're going to go ahead and go to the section where we said we had the event listener. And we had a section that said if, uh, if um, right here, if else if key event dot key code equals space. And in here, I can add an extra line and just say, sword hit dot play open close parentheses semicolon and if we run it let's see how that works out cool huh next we want to have it so that link uh, when he hits cope uh, there's a certain sound that plays. Well, again, we're going to need a sound effect. And you can go to that website, but I already have a sound that I want to use. So I'm just going to go to File, Import to Library. And here I'm going to import Cope Sound. I'm going to rinse and repeat. I'm going to right click on Cope Sound, go to Properties. Under Properties, I'm going to click a Export for Action Script, Export in Frame 1. I'm going to give it a class name. And I'll just call this uh, Cope Sound. And the base class is correct, so I'm going to click OK. Again, capital K because it's a class. Click OK there. And then inside our code, we're going to go ahead and create another variable, var. And I'm just going to call this uh, Cope Hit colon sound equals new sound. Uh, excuse me, equals uh, uh, Cope sound open close parentheses semicolon now this one's a little bit uh, has a little tricky let me explain why 
We have a hit test for coping, and you might be thinking, well, this should be pretty simple. If link uh, hits cope, just play the sound. But what would happen if I did that? Let's, in fact, let's try it out and see what would happen. Cope sound dot play. Open close parenthesis semicolon. Take a look at what happens. Oh, I think I typed a little error there. Uh, I didn't mean cope sound. Co uh, cope hit dot play. So he's here. Watch what happens. Now, what happened there is that it was looping over and over the cope hit sound. The cope hit sound is simply this. And I only want it to play once, but here, as long as he's hitting cope, it'll just keep looping it over and over and over as long as cope and link are hitting each other. So that's not going to work. We want it to just play one time. For that to work, the best way to do it is to use a boolean. And here's how we're going to do that. Let's go back to the top, the very beginning of our code. And we're going to create a, a boolean here. So var, and I'm just going to call it uh, cope. Uh, let's see, we can call this cope um, hitting link. Okay, cope hitting link colon boolean equals new boolean false. So we made a boolean called cope hitting link and its value is going to be set to false. What we want to do is say if cope hitting link is false play the sound and if it's true don't play the sound and here's how we're going to use that to our advantage. We're going to go back down to the cope code where Cope's brain was. And let's erase that there. Inside the uh, if statement, we're going to create a new if statement. So we have an if statement, and then we're creating a second one. So right now I'm inside the hit test condition. I'm going to type in if, open parentheses, and then I'm going to put an exclamation point. Exclamation point means not, so or not true or false. So I'm going to type in exclamation point cope hitting link. I think that's what we called it above, right? Let me double check. Cope hitting link, yeah. So if not cope hitting link, that means if cope hitting link is not true, open curly bracket, close curly bracket, cope hit dot play open close parentheses semicolon so let's see what would happen there still looping over and over the problem is that we have it set so that cope hitting link is false the entire time what if we were to write immediately after that cope hitting link equals true. So it's going to play the song or the sound once, then cope hitting link becomes true. So when it goes back to check if cope is hitting link, it won't play this anymore because now it's false. And if it's false, I'm sorry, now it's true. And because it's true, it will no longer play this line. So let's try it now. There it goes. It played once. But now the problem is it continues to be true. And whenever Link touches Cope, there's no sound to be he heard. So what I can do is go inside this else. We made an else that said if Cope is not touching Link. Inside the curly bracket, Cope hitting Link equals false. So this else happens when cope and link are not hitting each other, not touching each other. And when that's happening, cope hitting link becomes false again. And the next time cope touches link, it's false. It'll play the sound and then set it to true right after. Let's give it a shot. There it 
There we go. So those are the basics of so those are the basics of adding sounds and sound effects to your games. Uh, be creative and try different uh, strategies, but those are the basics that you would need to get started. Hope you enjoyed the lesson, and I'll see you on the next part.